Welcome to the Aramir Roundtable. Today is the 27th of February, 2019, and we have our guest Scott from Stratagem Trade today. So welcome, Scott. It's nice to have you back. Oh, nice to be back. Thanks, Tom. And uh, Scott's going to talk to us about uh, Vipers. It's an interesting subject, and that's kind of an introduction to it. So uh, um, I really like what Scott's doing with uh, Stratagem, with uh, the risk reversals and uh, all the different uh, ideas that you have. So I really appreciate all the education and um, you know, I, I try and incorporate some of it with what I'm doing, but I, I give you credit and uh, always uh, tell people to head over to your site to get some extra training because it's uh, really good stuff. So I really, really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate that, Tom. Um, well, let's get started then because I already kept you waiting a couple minutes. So You bet. And I'll just mute myself and uh, I'll be here, but I don't want any background noise to distract. So uh, to take it away. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, we're gonna be talking about Vipers, which is probably the best strategy I know. Um, I've been in the markets since the mid 80s. I was on the floors during the crash in 87. And I, I take trading very seriously. It's it's more than just a job, it's, it's a hobby to me. So I'm just always trying to play with it. It's fun, so I'm always, involved in it. It's, it's one of those things that I just can't get away from. I'm, I'm daydreaming about it when watching movies and stuff. And this is probably in my search of the best trade there is, um, the winner. So let me explain to you what it is. This is a very remedial introduction of it. It's at first going to seem like it's very complicated and too many moving parts, but that's in itself the beauty of the trade in that you're allowed to hedge yourself and um, it, it's so well protected. So let's go on and before I go any further I want to say that I, I appreciate um, Tom's hard work and dedication to you guys and in inviting me in here. And my disclaimer is just real simple. I'm going to give you the same disclaimer I give everybody in our company, which is just saying we're an education company. We give out education, not advice. We're not acting as tax consultants or introducing brokers. We're not remunerated by brokerage firms to recommend anything. And any examples that you guys see here are not an indication that you should, we're giving out a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Going uh, beyond that, these are the different exchange floors. Um, I was uh, in Chicago. I was on the Chicago Board of Trade for a while. I was in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange floor, which is where the S&P 500 futures are. And then I spent most of my career on the Siebel floor, which is where the S&P 500 options are, Coke, uh, IBM, et cetera. So as I, as I was saying, I've been like searching for the best low risk trade there is. And most of you guys have already seen this from previous classes. So I'm not even gonna spend any time introducing who we are. I'll send you guys the slides so you can read more about it if you want at your own time. But let's just hop right in to the Viper. And just work your way through it, guys. It's pretty commonsensical, but it's more moving parts. It's twice as many moving parts as most trades that you're accustomed to because we're operating with a hedge at the same time as we're making a bet. Most people will go out and buy a call spread and then hope the market goes up or they put on a collar and hope a stock goes up. We're gonna be working with an additional hedge to make this trade less risky. And so there's one more moving part. Now let's go back to when the end of last year when the market was falling apart. And October 3rd, Chairman Powell um, made a statement that said that we're far from normalization of interest rates. It scared the markets and from October until the last day of the year, the market just fell hard. It fell 20%. And this is the graph of it right here. Now, when you're a trader and the market's just falling apart, 
you obviously would love to have a bunch of puts because you're going to be making money on the downside, on the move down, but those puts are also going to be making a huge amount of money by the explosion of the volatility component, Vega. So you're, 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 it's a double win almost. And because of that, if you catch a move down early, it's the best thing in the world. Like I said, I started before the crash in 87. And then we had a, a, a mini crash in 89, in 91. And it seemed like every two years, the stock market was crashing. And every two years, I was just loving it because I, I got to like and embrace moves down because you can get a what would take a year for the market to go up can occur in a day, two days, three days. And you just, if you're on the right side of it, it's like all you need is a fat man and a tree and you have Christmas. The problem is what if you don't catch it right away? What if the market's already fallen 10%, 15%, 20%? What do you do right here? I don't know if anybody listening in was, was trading back in October, November, December when the market was just falling apart. And, and, and was just wondering, what do I do here? If I, volatility so high, call spreads are expensive, put spreads are expensive. I don't know if I get long, if it's gonna keep falling, if I get short, I'm selling the bottom. And you, you, a lot of people, most people, as a matter of fact, that I know, were very confused on what to do. This is the beautiful strategy the Viper is the beautiful strategy that you want in these situations where when the whole world is, is confused and scared and scrambling, it's time to get up to bat and it's a very laid back, easy going, hedged trade to take advantage of chaos. So anytime I'm ever watching the market fall, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is where's volatility? How do I make money off of this? Because there's only one thing that is proven in the stock market. We don't know where the market's going to be a day from now, a month from now, a year from now. But we do know that volatility is measured by the VIX and all the other VIX products always reverts back to the mean. No matter how high volatility gets, it always goes back to its mean. And that's the trade we're working on. When volatility is too high, we sell it. And we know within a week or two, volatility is going to go back to its mean. When it's too low, we can also buy it and hope it goes back to its mean on the upside. That is the Cyclops' eye. That is, that is the stake in this dinner of trade. So, when you look at that previous graph blown up, this is what you see. We fell 20% from the highs in October to the lows in December. That is the green and red line that you see there. That magenta or purple line you see is volatility. For those who don't know this one, the volatility is high, it's probably because the market is falling. When volatility is low, there's complacency, usually because the market is climbing. And volatility in the stock market tend to go in opposite directions of each other. When the market's going down, volatility goes up. When volatility's, or when the market's going up, volatility goes down. And that is the basis of this trade. So let's get into it a little bit more detail. What exactly is a Viper? And some of you guys may be familiar with pair trading. Okay, and what is pair trading? People who are a little bit more um, cerebral in their approach to trading are always looking for a safer way to trade without limiting their profitability. And one of the ways in which some people 
limit their risk is by what they call pair trade. They will say to themselves, I think Coke is going higher. I think Coke is going to outperform Pepsi. Or Pepsi is going to outperform Coke. And they'll go and buy one. Now, most people think Coke is going to outperform Pepsi. They'll just go out and buy Coke. There's a problem with that. What if the market falls huge? Regardless if Coke is a underpriced stock or not, the market falling dramatically is gonna weigh on the price of Coke. Coke will go, in a market crash, Coke is gonna go down no matter how underpriced it is. It'll just get more underpriced. So one way in which people hedge themselves instead of options is by pair trading. They'll buy Coke, and they'll sell Pepsi, which they think is gonna lose market share to Coke, or Nike versus Adidas, or et cetera. Now, Coke and Pepsi are very similar businesses, but they have different management, different businesses. Pepsi's heavy into the foods, um, with snacks and Taco Bell and stuff. They have different marketing techniques. They attract a different, um, age group, they taste different, et cetera. They're not the same company. So they will move in tandem. In the summer, everyone's consuming more soft drinks. So the stocks tend to go higher because more Coke and Pepsi are bought. But in a crash, both stocks are gonna go down. There is a relationship between Coke and Pepsi because they're in the same sector. And here you see a graph of Coke and Pepsi. Coke is the darker blue line, whereas Pepsi below it is in the lighter blue line. You'll see that they move really up and down with each other, but there's a convergence and divergence of the stocks in relationship to one another. So what traders will do is if they like Coke better than Pepsi, it doesn't matter where they buy it because they're gonna be selling another one against it. For example, let's say you buy Coke right there and you hedge it by selling Pepsi. What they'll do is just wait until the price of these two separate. Not just Coke going higher or Pepsi going lower, but the, the relationship between the two separate them. And then they'll just reverse out of the trade when they can sell Coke at a higher price than they bought, uh, have to buy Pepsi back at and a profit occurs. Now, if you look at Coke from where we buy it and where we sell it, we may have lost money on the Coke purchase. Okay, we'll be buying Coke higher than we sell it, but we sold Pepsi and are buying it way lower. So we'll lose a little and make a lot. And that is how pair trades work and it works with currencies, it works with the SPY versus the QQQs, different banks, pizza companies, etc. There is a problem though in this pair trade in that strange things can happen. When McDonald's fired its CEO a couple of years ago and got a new one, he redid the whole company. If you had McDonald's versus Burger King the wrong way, because of the change of management, things went haywire. The new McDonald's CEO introduced breakfast anytime and did some radical changes, and the stock went from 90 to 100 very quickly, then went through 100, and last I checked, it's the it's next focal point that traders are focusing on with McDonald's is 200, and that's just in a couple of years. So changes in management, changes in marketing can throw off your relationship. The great thing about the pair trade is that there's a science to it and that the relationship between the products we're gonna be using are a lot better correlated than the relationship between Domino's and Pizza Hut or Coke and Pepsi. Okay, and there's a science to the pair trading in equities that doesn't always pan out because variables change. 
There's a much better idea though. We're gonna be dealing with the Vipers, which is the SPX versus the VIX. And why is this so great? Is because the VIX calculation, what they use to measure the VIX is calculated directly from the option prices in the S&P 500. So a change in recipes of Coke or a change in management or different business model or lawsuits um, aren't gonna affect this pair relationship like most equity pair relationships. For those who don't know what the VIX is, it's just really a measure of volatility. It shows the market's expected volatility 30 days out in time. It's not measuring where volatility is today. It's measuring where it expects volatility to be next month. And that number is calculated directly from the options in the S&P 500 options chain. It's, so it's a very great relationship to play with. Now here's an SPX option chain and you just look at the volatilities and you'll see that volatilities change throughout strike prices. And that is because of something, a phenomenon called skew. Skew never existed. I remember being in the S&P 500 options pit over on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange back in 1986. And traders would price an option off of one volatility. If the at the money option was 10%, every option in the chain was trading at 10%. But because of the crash in 87, people started looking at risk differently. And what developed was skew. And the further out of the money to the downside options get, the higher volatility goes, that's skew. So how do you measure the VIX if there's a different VIX calculation at every strike? Well, they average it out and they're looking for it in a forward 30 day looking um, calculation. The problem is sometimes there's not options 30 days out in the SPX. It may be 28 days out, 29 days out, then the next option expiration is 34 days out. So what they have to do is come up with a relationship between the option chain with less than 30 days and the one with more than 30 days and come up with an average of sorts. And they just start moving a weighting back and forth. And it gets a little bit complicated in the process. They're, they're buying and selling stuff every day on the close to change the weighting of different volatility products. And it's not important for right now to know how it's done. As a matter of fact, a lot of volatility traders, people who just focus on VXX or VIX options, what have you, aren't even really intimately knowledgeable about how they play with this. But there's more details about that. We go into a, a lot of every single detail of how these things work when we're teaching it. But the primary products we're gonna be using is the SPX or the SPX PM. You can do this in the spiders, the SPYs. You can even do these in the E-mini options. For those people who like trading at night, you can trade the E-mini options. If something happens like during the election when the market fell a thousand points and then bounced a thousand points right before the open, you could have been hedging all night long with the E-mini options. And the volatility products are open at the same time too. The E-mini, pro uh, the volatility products trade in the middle of the night just like the S&P 500 options uh, E-minis do. So what is the relationship? We already touched on this. When the market declines or the market advances, things change. Vol when the SPX goes down, volatility goes up. And when the market goes up, volatility tends to go down as an average. Here's the election. 
just the night of the election, you can see we fell a thousand points and we bounced before the open. Volatility fell. Then once the market started falling, volatility climbed dramatically in the VIX futures. And by the end of the day, they were back to the start. For those who are trading overseas, and don't like American trading hours, this can be done at night too. Now, what is the VXX? This is just one of the Vile products. Currently, I'm using UVXY, the SVXY, and the VXX, but the VXX is the most liquid. And what it is is the VXX and VIX futures have a value decay. They decay, not like an option decays, but because of what I showed you earlier, a couple of slides ago, I showed you how they have to keep rolling volatility futures around to simulate a 30-day portfolio. And that rolling is co called contango loss or drag. And so one of the great things, guys, don't underestimate this, one of the great things about the Viper trade that we're gonna be working on is that despite what the market does, these volatility products like the VXX that we trade have a tendency to always be going down. They have a loss built into it of about 5% a month. Okay, right now, the VXXB is at about 31, 70. Okay, it's at 3170. If you can look it up, it's called VXXB. Okay, the VXX symbol is VXXB. Victor X ray, X ray, Bravo. And it's at about 3170 when five when this class started. Now, if it has 5% decay a month, that means this product is gonna lose a dollar fifty eight or so per month. How cool is it to be trading something that's gonna be losing value every single month? Would you rather own a call or a put in something that's gonna be losing value every month? You're gonna to wanna to own a put, and that's the great thing. When volatility goes up, you wanna get shorted, so you buy a put. In addition, it has this drag component attached to it that's also causing the underlying to fall a dollar and a half a month. So all things being equal, this VXXB product, which is at 3175 when the class started, should be close to 30 a month from now, all other variables being constant. So even if volatility doesn't decline, this underline is gonna lose value as well. Okay, and there's other things that I'm not gonna go into in great detail right now because I'd turn this class into a three hour, four hour, two day class. But this is essentially how this drag works. Every single month, let me try to get the annotation tools. Whoops. Okay. Let me get fancy. Let's say they're trying to create the value for this product 30 days out in time. And the February's at 1682 are 28 days to expiration. And these ones that are under the March column are 33 days to expiration. They have to buy and sell futures to simulate a 30 day. And this buying and selling of futures all the time means they're gonna be selling the front month 
buying the back month and it creates an average just keeps going down and this is greatly oversimplified but that's what causes the drag that we were speaking of okay now Here is the VXX over 15 years. You'll see it was at 122,888. Was it really that high? No, because what they do is every time this thing gets too low, they have a reverse split. Okay, this graph is without the reverse splits in it, but it does give you a visual rep representation of drag. Now, I don't expect anyone to understand in this quick of an explanation, but it just shows you that we have something, a, a beautiful tailwind propelling this trade into profitability at a much faster rate than the engine of the trade should allow for. Now here, you'll also see that there's a beautiful relationship between the VXX and the SPX. Again, here are the tools we're going to be using. And what I want to show you here is you'll see that when the SPX goes down, what happens? The SPX being this darker line, volatility increases. And then on days when the SPX goes down or up, excuse me, volatility will decrease. And you'll see a beautiful relationship. SPX down, volatility goes higher. Again, SPX goes up, volatility goes down. That's what creates this relationship. We're going to be long one and short the other. But we're going to be doing it with puts on both sides to make things easy. Most of the time we'll be doing puts. You can do it with calls, but then it gets complicated. Um, and we want the puts because we want to have the drag component working in our favor. But there's a million ways to do it. We just can't go into it right now. But when the markets are falling and you see the Dow down 500 on the first day of the week, we're excited. What do most people do? They panic. We're excited. We know we got a trade that's going to be having an edge built in. The higher volatility goes, the more the market falls, the better opportunities are in front of us. So what happens when the market's down 500? We start getting busy. We're trading our butts off and we're comfortable with the trade. We don't need the market to go up because we're hedged. If the market continues falling, we're gonna be fine as well. So let's say the market is falling on the SPX, what are we gonna do? We're gonna sell the market via puts. We're gonna get long a put spread because volatility is increased over on the right hand side and we wanna get short volatility for when it goes back down to its mean. When the VIX is at a 20, we know it's eventually going back to 15. So we wanna be short volatility but the only way volatility is not gonna go down is what? The only way volatility is not gonna come back in is that the market keeps falling every single day. So the SPX acts as a hedge for that. How much do I love pairs? In our pot class, okay? Every year we start out the pot class with an account of $100,000, and we just trade for an entire year from January to the end of December, the first trade I did to start out the year was a Viper trade. And here you see, we bought two SPX, 2490-2445 put spreads. Obviously the market was a lot lower at the start of the year because December was horrendous. And we bought put spreads in the VIX, why? Or excuse me, in the VXX. Why? Volatility 
was high. The VXXB was high. The VXXB was over 47. Where did I say it's at right now? 31, 31.75. It was over 47. So I wanted, volatility was so high, I wanted to get short it because I knew or was, didn't know for sure, but was expecting a reversion back to the mean in volatility where it'd get down to its 30s. So why not own a put spread if you think it's gonna go lower? Here's what happened. You'll see that the last day of the year for the start of January, put on a trade, the first trading day of the year, second trading day of the year, a couple days later, we took the trade off. Is roll on, roll off. Volatility came in a little bit, we took the trade back off. Here is that trade you just saw. Up at the top, what do we have on? Well, let me, let me see which one of these things is a pencil. Okay, your icons are a little bit different than mine, but we'll go with this way. Right here is the purchase of a $45 wide put spread in the SPX. Only two contracts. Why? Because this is our hedge. We bought 40 contracts of a $4 put spread in the VXXBs. We market was falling, volatility jumped. And so we figured volatility is gonna start coming in. Let's buy a put spread so when volatility goes down, we make money on the volatility put spread. And that's a $4 wide put spread. We bought two contracts of an SPX put as a hedge. Why? Because below you'll see the math. I spent $14.90 on the put spread for the SPX two times. And I spent $1.60 on the VXX put spread. Now what's gonna happen? Who knows? Is the market gonna go higher or lower? Who knows? It doesn't matter to us. It really doesn't matter to us. On this particular example, I was actually a little bit under hedged. Why? Because if you look right here, let's say the market goes up. What's gonna happen? When the market goes up, what's gonna happen to our SPX put spread? It's gonna go out worthless, right? And my, I paid 14.90 on it on two contracts. I'll lose about $3,000. But as the market's going higher, what's happening to volatility? Volatility's coming in. So my put spread that's $4 wide, I paid $1.60 on, is gonna make 240 or $9,600. So I'm gonna lose about $3,000 on my SPX because the market's going higher and that put spread's going out worthless, but I can make $4 on the put spread I paid $1.60 on, or $2.40 times 40 contracts, I can make $9,600 on the volatility put spreads because volatility's coming in. And what happens to that? It nets out to be a $6,600 winner. Now think about this for a second, guys. This is how, this is the magic of the trade I was looking at back in 87 or 89 or 91 when the markets are crashing. But volatility products didn't exist back then. How many times do you wanna say, 
hey, you know what? The market's down 10% or the market's down 20%. I want to get along the market. But you're afraid to because it's falling so hard and so fast that you, you're, you're scared the whole time. You buy a call spread in the SPX or in Apple or in, in Amazon, and what happens? Immediately that put spread or that call spread is going to go cheaper because you're never going to buy the dead bottom. You may have gone in on December 24th and bought a call spread expecting the Christmas rally the day after Christmas. But guess what? You're expecting the market to bounce. The market's down 20%. You expect it to bounce. The next day, the market's open up after Christmas, and it's down another 600 Dow points. Your call spread is getting decimated. It's hard to bottom fish. You know, there's a somewhat crude of a joke saying anyone who, you know, any bottom pickers always end up with stinky fingers. Or, you know, trying to bottom fish is like trying to catch a falling knife. Here, it doesn't matter because we're hedged. We put this trade on. If the market goes up like we're anticipating, our volatility product makes $9,600. And we lose on the SPX side. No big deal. We're net up $6,600 on one trade. And you say, okay, that's great, but what if the market kept falling? Okay, if the market keeps falling, who cares? We're hedged. If the market keeps falling, volatility is going to keep going up. And we're going to lose $1.60 on that put spread we paid $1.64, for, so we can lose $6,400 on our volatility. But because the market's still falling, we're going to make $30.10 on our hedge. Our SPX put spread is going to make $30.10 times two contracts. We're going to make $6,000 on that trade which offsets almost every single penny of the VIX, and we'll be down $380. Now, some of you guys are like, this is awesome. I'm risking 380 to make 6,600. That's better than what I'm doing right now. Actually, this was a little bit biased of a trade. Most of the time, I want to see pluses on both sides. I want to see a positive if the market goes down, and a positive if the market goes up. I just got a, after we were falling so much at the end of the year, again, I put this on December 31st, right before the start of the new year, we were down 20%. And I was pretty bullish. Anyone that reads our morning report sees that from January 2nd, until the present day, I, every single day I'm saying, this year is gonna be a huge year to the upside. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be right, but I was pretty bullish when I put the trade on and I was accepting, I was accepting that on this particular trade, worst case scenario, I'll have a $380 loss. I could have played with these strikes of this put spread made it one strike wider, which would have cost me a little bit more to hedge this trade and eradicate it all loss to the downside. Most of the time I have a pair trade. If the market goes down, I have a small profit. And if the market goes up, I have a big profit. This one, you just see a negative, but I'm not gonna, you know, it is what it is. I, I was willing to accept the $380 loss. So that's how it works. If the market bounces, and guess what the market did? It has bounced, right? So if the market bounces, I get my $6,000, six, $6,600, and if the market kept falling, I'd lose $380. No big deal. That's what a Viper is, guys. It's a pair trade. 
and we, like I said, I love this trade so much. The first trade we did in pot this year was a Viper. Every time volatility goes up, I slap on Vipers. Um, I was waiting today for the VIX to go a little bit higher. The VIX got up to about 16.2. I don't remember the exact number, but it was close to 16.2. I almost got short. If I wasn't teaching the class, I was going to sell 16.2, expecting volatility to get back down to about 14 by the end of the week. Um, but this class is more important than one trade. There's, an, there's a trade every week in the Viper. So, and, and you, we do a lot of them on our pod class. Now, a lot of people keep asking what is pod class, and it's our weekly Wednesday night class that we have from 7 to 8.30 Eastern. It's recorded, so if you can't be there during trading hour, or during the class hours, it's no big deal. Probably a third of my students are in Europe or, I mean, well, they're, they're around the globe. I don't, I think we're in 18 countries, 20 countries, something like that. But um, about a third of the people listen to the recording because they can't watch it during the 7 to 8.30 Eastern hours. And what we do is once a week, I have a 90-minute class, and I teach something. And then we do about 7 to 10 trades per week, and, you know, not new trades, but some of the trade or transactions are actually closing or adjusting. I buy a trade, it goes against me, I adjust it or hedge it. It's still the first trade, but it's really the adjustment makes it a second trade. And you see everything I'm doing on a million different trades, risk reversals, collars, selling premium through iron condors, um, rolling thunders, call spreads, everything you can imagine out there, um, jelly rolls, time spreads, et cetera, BWBs. And everybody participating today, if you've not done so already, you're entitled to a one month free trial. And just to show you an example, all last year, we just kept doing these left and right. Part of pot, we keep a running p &L. We start the account with 100,000 at the beginning of the year. January 1, we start with 100,000. We keep track of what the market's doing and where the P&L is throughout the entire year. And that's what pod is. And to show you the topics, the topics for this month were BWB guidelines, advanced cheap strangles, uh, trade at a month, and trading shortcuts. March schedule is going to be coming out uh, on Friday. So if you haven't already had a free trial of it for a month, you're more than, you know, by being part of Airmer, you're entitled to it. But we do a ton of these trades. I mean, let us trade 50, 62, 65, 67, 70 of last year. I mean, every three, four, five trades was a Viper last year. Um, that's it. I mean, that, that's how beautiful this trade is. I know it's a little bit complicated to start out with because you, one product's going up, the other one's going down. Whereas you're used to just rooting for Tesla to go higher or the market to go lower, or you're, you're hoping for one direction on one product only. Um, here, we have two different products working in different directions, but crashes. This is I, I can't wait for the next crash. You will not see me doing anything in the next crash other than putting, you know, getting short the market on the way down, getting out and hedging on the way down. And then the higher volatility goes, the more vipers I do. Um, lastly, before I go any further, a couple of students have asked about the Maui class. Every year, I have a live class, only one live class a year, sometimes two. Sometimes we get together in Vegas for a couple of days and just trade as a group. Um, 
and I have a couple classes in Italy every year. But as far as the U.S. is concerned, we have one class a year in January in, in Maui. Maui is quite expensive to go to. The hotels are four fifty a night. Airfare is expensive. It's a long flight for people. And so to do something different, we're having it in Fort Lauderdale this year. And I'm just calling it Maui outside of Miami. And that's the hotel we're staying at. It's going to be in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and the class topic is how I trade. It is going to be three days of everything I do to ascertain when I'm getting in trades, when I get out of trades, et cetera, how I'm managing the portfolio, what I'm looking at to pick market direction, et cetera. And you can go on our website and get a lot more information about it. But a couple of people have asked, and I also give Tom of, in your group the best deal. We, we don't even discount ever other than loyalty discounts. If you were in a class last year, we give you a discount this year because we reward loyalty. The worst thing I hate is cell phone companies. Why? I've been with the same cell phone company for 15 years and they won't lower my price. Despite paying 300 a month for the last 15 years, they don't care about me. Who do they care about? The new guy that gets $90 a month, unlimited everything, and you get three free phones. The new guys that they'll let anybody in at dirt cheap, cheaper than I can get, even though I've been around forever and been loyal. We do things different. The longer you're with us, the more loyal you are to us, the more we would reward you. The opposite of phone companies. So really the only discounts we give are to loyal customers and to Irmer, okay? Tom's like one of the greatest guys I've ever seen in this industry. And um, so we re we give you guys a 10% Irmer discount to everything. Um, we negotiate big blocks of rooms at the hotels to keep things down. Like I said, in Maui, it's hard to find a room in January for under 450 a night. But we're having it in Miami in April to get out of peak season. This is going to be our cheap class. This is the one time we're worrying about a budget. Um, we negotiated rooms down to $189 a night. And for those who want to be even a little bit cheaper, 10 minutes away, we also negotiated a brand new comfort in at $124 a night. Normal stuff like one book or the Viper class or just Maui, you guys still get your 10% off by using the arrow code or the code for your group, arrow 10. That's impressive. Well, you know, this is probably going to be the last time I do it. I'm sure I'm going to get an, the second I hang up with you, Tom. You're going to get an earful. Yeah. <laughs> my employees are going to tell me I'm fired. So, um, <laughs> Any questions so far? Uh, I don't see any in the chat, so uh, I think people uh, you know, got what you were saying. Well, either they got what I was saying or I did such a poor example of explaining it that they're too confused to ask a, an intelligent question. Well, we're, almost everybody who started is still with us, so uh, that's a good sign. Only fell asleep, Tom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, really appreciate it. Uh, um, uh, I hope the, uh, the, um, the the seminar is a success and people can sign up for that. It sounds really interesting. And the, the Vipers looks like a great trade too. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that Maui class always sells out. And, you know, the thing is it's also broadcast real time because, like I said, we have people all over the world and some people just can't make it to Florida for a three-day class because of family obligations. So, it's recorded and it's broadcast real time. So people at home can still participate in the class too. So, and what's, we've got, I don't know if you've ever seen, if you have Jaguar TV commercials out by you, Tom. Well, I'm in the U.S. now. Don't forget. Oh, are you? Yeah, I did, I'm, I'm I thought, in Colorado Springs. You know what? I thought it was at the start of March. 
Well, no, we got here uh, on the 11th of February, and then we have to go back to Europe to get our parrot on the 11th of March, and then it's only an eight-day trip, and then we come back. I misunderstood. I, I thought, like, you were talking about your bird and in March, and so I thought that's when you were coming back. I'm sorry. No, no. Yeah, we came here to get a house. We're, we're closing on the 1st of April. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's great. You know, like I said, my brother lives in, you know, Golden, so I see him a lot. When next time I'm out there, I'll buy you dinner. Yeah, let me know when you're coming out here. Like I said, most of our students are, um, well, anyhow, the Jaguar commercials. I was talking about the Jaguar. Com the guy who does the Jaguar commercials does our recording of our classes and then puts in high def and edits it and everything. So it's not, it's a professional grade recording. And um, so a lot of people stay at home just out of convenience and participate in the class because it's just like being in the classroom. Um, but, and anyone who attends live or online gets access to the recordings. But it, you saw a picture of the room. There's only 30 seats in it. We sell out. Um, we used to have 100 seat rooms and stuff, but since we've, gotten this guy to do the real-time recordings and everything it's better than being in the classroom and people are sitting at home and and watching it now it's more convenient and they save trips and airplane rides and hotels and everything so we get smaller rooms now and um on the live attendance and huge rooms on the the broadcast and so It'll still be sold out, though, because um, we only do one class a year in the U.S. Right. You know, then I'm doing the road trip in, in Milan, in Rome. So, um, but I want to thank you, Tom. And also, I want to thank my, my people who help me with everything to make these classes. I got like the best staff in the world. Um, and I want to thank you guys. Well, thank you, Scott. Again, appreciate it. I will uh, get this out, the recording to everybody so they have an opportunity to uh, take a look. It's a great looking trade and um, with the nice discounts, they can save some money versus just going to the site without the code. Yeah, it's, um, we don't, like I said, I don't, I didn't even tell Glenda about this. This was a decision I made at about four in the morning when making slides. So, um, so you're probably going to have to email the office to take advantage of that. If you just buy one product, use the Aero 10, Aero 10 code. But if you want to buy both products, you're going to have to email the office and she's going to have to force it through somehow. Probably just do an invoice or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they do there. They explain to me once and means as long as they take care of it, that's all you need to know. Right. Yeah. That I, I, like I said, I got the best staff in the world. They, they compensate for my grumpy side. <laughs> they're, 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 the, they're the most helpful people in the world. I mean, Glenda is working at two, three in the morning sometimes just to help out somebody overseas, you know, that's great. So, all right, Scott, well, I'll let you get back to the markets and, uh, Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for the great presentation. And uh, yeah, we look forward to having you again in the future. Okay. If you guys got any questions, just email me. You know what the Itzhak Perlman, the famous violinist said, um, you can be invited to play at any uh, venue, but it only means something if they invite you back. That is so true. That is so true. All right. With that, I will uh, let everybody go and uh, have a great day and uh, we'll see everybody next time. So thanks, Scott. Thanks, Mr. Perlman. All right. <laughs> See ya. Bye-bye.